Welcome to my channel. In my previous tutorials in this mini-series, we constructed a grid, placed a player in the grid, and moved it around. I think it's time to give the player a monster to fight. At the moment, the monster is passive. It won't attack the player, but that will change in a future version. If you're on the same square as the monster, then you can press the H key to hit or attack the monster. That will open up a dialogue where the combat will take place. After one of you dies, the dialogue closes. If the player dies, then the game ends. If the monster dies, then the player is returned to the game. Okay, that's the overview. Now let's step through the program. This is a very simple program. My goal is to keep these tutorials as easy to understand as possible in the hope that they may become a starting point for your own game. As you can see, I've set up a game class in the module myclasses.py, and I import this to main.py. I then create an object variable from the class and read in the relevant data. I'll take a detailed look at this in a moment. Finally, I call the main function and start the game loop. If you run this, you'll see a window. That window will stay open until either the user closes it or the escape key is pressed. Here you can see the initialization function for the game class. The first thing we do is call init pygame. This sets up the graphics, so let's go over that. The first thing I do is initialize pygame, because if I don't do this, then nothing else will work. Next, I assign a background color. I've set the background color to what I call, and trust me it is, ugly pink. Then I initialize the clock, we'll use that later in game.main, and set the title that will display in the window. Again, I set this value in the constants.py file. As you can see, I have some values in this file I'm not going to use. For instance, the colors. I use these particular values quite often, so I thought I'd pass them along. So back to myclasses.py. Then, and this is quite possibly the most important line of the entire program, I create an object variable for the display surface. Nothing at all will display unless this is done. Yeah, I know that from experience, <laughs> trust me. Last but not least, we set the font. I'll talk more about this when we look at the module dialogues.py and the draw function. So back to the initialization function in class game. Now we set up the grasses class and the walls class. Structurally, they are nearly identical. As you can see, the individual grass tiles are held within a list, self grasses. The monster class is a bit different. Grass tiles and wall tiles don't move. Monsters and players do. That is the fundamental division, tiles that don't move, which I call environmental tiles, and tiles that do, the fauna. Each monster has a name and a kind. They have a maximum amount of damage that they can inflict per swing. The player and monster classes are identical except for the direction field in the player class. I use this to correctly orient the player tile depending upon which direction it is moving in. Now let's talk about reading in the player class. I'm not going to go over initializing either the player or monster class. It's straightforward. If you have any questions, please ask. So now we come to the line self all sprite equals pygame sprite group. Here we are initializing all sprites. This is a pygame function. Trust me, using a sprite group to keep track of your images will save you so much time and heartache. If you're not yet used to working with classes, this might seem mysterious. I know it did to me when I first used it, but having written code that didn't depend on a sprite group and code that did, I prefer to do things this way. So another thing that we do in the initialization is set keep looping to true. We also copy the original data files over to temporary files and the purpose of that is that the temporary files can be updated with the critter stats. We want to leave the original data files as they are because we don't want to keep repopulating them with data every time. Okay, now let's look at the function my game read data. The player's read data first function is enough like read data that we only have to review one. So let's look at the player's read function. I want to go over two things here. The first is my list equals utils read data file, and then we give the path the number of field. This is a function in the utilities.py file. I'm not going to step through this line by line, but this function will read in any file of this form. I put that up on the screen. So in this example, number of fields would be set to eight. Since there are eight fields per record, the function will return a list of dictionary objects, one dictionary object per record. Perhaps that sounds awkward, but it has saved me a lot of time. The second thing I want to mention is this line, player X, player Y, and then we do utils get player position from map. What I'm 
doing there is reading the player's location from the file so that I can double check that the player's map coordinates and the coordinates the map has for the player match. If they don't match, I need to know that as soon as possible so I can fix the problem. I've uploaded all my files to GitHub, so take a look. It's straightforward. If you have any questions, please ask. I'm doing that, by the way, because the more errors you can catch right away, the easier debugging will be. In fact, that's one thing. If I could communicate one thing to my younger self in terms of programming, it would be to catch every single error as soon as you can even if it means a lot more code, because it'll save you time in the long run. Here's my game main. So that's the main function in the game class. As you can see, as long as keep looping is true, the while loop will execute. In a moment, we'll see the conditions under which keep looping is set to false. When the while loop is terminated, the goodbye function is called. At the moment, this function, the goodbye function, simply thanks the user for playing. I won't go through it, but I've included a text dialog class you can call to display the message. By the way, I have a tutorial on the text dialog class that walks you through setting it up. I'll put the link in the upper right hand corner as well as in the description. After that, we exit the program. Strictly speaking, you don't need to include sysexit, but I think it's good form to put it in. I don't know what I'm going to add in the future, and it will ensure that the program does end. So now let's look at handling events and drawing. The two functions which are at the heart of the program are handle events and draw. As the name implies, handle events handles events, including keyboard and mouse events. In response to an arrow key being pressed, we first make sure that the player's image tile is oriented in the correct direction, and then, if possible, move the player onto a new tile. Players can't be moved onto a wall tile. The player's current orientation is then recorded. If the player has pressed H and they are on the same tile as a monster, then the player will hit the monster and initiate a fight. Let's see what it looks like to have a fight in the little world we are creating. So the first thing we do is instantiate the dialog fight class and fight dialog. Let's take a look at that. The second thing we do in this function is call the main function in dialog fight. Here's the initialization function. The good news is that you don't have to read in any data. Just assign the player and the monster to class-wide variables. I do, though, have to adjust a couple of things since the monster and the player images need to be displayed at different locations. This is done in these two lines. I won't go over the rest in detail since the logic of all these initializations is the same. If you have any questions, please do leave a comment. Now that fight dialog is initialized, all we have to do is call the main function. Let's quickly step through this. Self clock tick, and I've set that to a constant that I set in constants.py. It makes it easy to change if I ever want to. If I were to set the tick rate to say 20, what this means is that for every second, at most 20 frames will be displayed. 20 frames per second is a low frame rate, but we don't need anything higher. In fact, you could set it lower. Since we set keep looping to true when we initialize the class, the code within the while loop will execute. I'll look at this code in a minute. Right now, let's examine save data. Here's what that function looks like. I'm not going to step through both of these because they are largely the same. That's all straightforward. Let's take a quick peek at file line equals self get file line. You can see the code up there on the screen. As you can see, this function returns a formatted string. Here's the main while loop. Let's start by looking at the code executed if the H key is pressed. As you can see, we get a random number between 0 and 99. If the random number is less than or equal to the player's chance to hit, then the monster is hit and suffers damage. To see how much damage the monster will suffer, we would ideally look at whether the monster is shielded in any way and take into account the strength of the player and so on. However, as it is, let's keep things simple. So here's self monster calculate damage. That's right, I just returned the maximum damage and call it a day. This will become more complex down the line. Right now the player doesn't even have a weapon. When either the monster's or the player's hit points are less than or equal to zero, we set keep looping to false. Now let's look at the second and the last function in the while loop, draw. I've already gone over much of the code here, so I'll focus on what is unique to this function. 
What's happening here is that I'm using a function I wrote years ago and feeding it text to blit onto the drawing surface. I put the strings in a list and then give that list to talk dialogue. Now all that is left to do is flip the drawing surface so it's visible to the user. Once keep looping has been set to false, the while loop terminates and save data is called. The data is saved and we are returned to dialogue have a fight. After the fight is over, we need to restart the game and, depending upon who has died, update the monster image tile or the player image tile. Let's step through restart game. Look at the line self input pi game. I used to put all the lines that are in init pi game into the initialization function for the class, but I eventually placed them in their own function because often the graphics will need to be refreshed from scratch. I've already talked about all these lines before, so let's go over reading the player's data back in. You can see here, self player read data second. When I read the player's data in the first time, I check to make sure that the player's XY coordinates on the map align with the XY coordinates in the player's file. However, they won't be aligned now because we've changed those for display in dialogue fight. Rather than take out this error checking code, I just wrote a special read data function for when we need to reload the player after having been displayed in a dialog box. Another option would have been to have loaded another image for the player, one specific to the dialog box, but do whatever works for you. Notice that when either a monster or the player dies, the image will have to be replaced with the appropriate graphic. Then we say goodbye and quit, but I've already gone over those functions. As always, if you have any questions, leave a comment and I will get back to you. Thank you for watching. I welcome all feedback. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you next time.